Hey guys, it's Ellen here. Today we're creating all these really beautiful, simple, easy autumn leaves and elements using oval brushes. These brushes are great to have um, if you're doing watercolor. You can make these leaves very simply just by manipulating the brushes. I give you step by step on how I do it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon. I have exclusive videos and tutorials over there and traceable downloads. That link is in the description box and on my about page. So let's get started. So there are several types of oval type brushes. I have three in my little repertoire. I have a Princeton half inch Neptune oval. It has a nice point to it. This is a very pointy brush. You see that? Which makes for great stems and leaves. Then I have this Robert Simmons Sapphire brush. This is another half inch. And this is a little rounder. As you can see, the tip is a rounder for an oval brush. And then this, they call this a filbert, but it's basically a tinier oval brush. It's much smaller. Um, this is the Princeton from the Velvet Touch series. And this is a filbert brush, which is an oval brush, but very small and tiny. So really, I mixed up a bunch of different like colors, autumn type colors. And I'm working on my Arches 100% cotton cold pressed paper, uh, which is a great paper if you want to bleed in color and play around with it. And it's so simple to use this type of brush. So you just put some water on your brush, get it wet. And we can just grab some, just basically of the brown paint here. I have a Van Dyke brown. And see the tip gets really pointy. It's fantastic. And a belly holds a lot of paint. So really you can just take the brush. I always use my pinky as a guide. And you're just holding it upright and you're just pulling down with the tip stem. Very simple, right? With the belly and the point of the brush, you can touch the tip of this stem, push down on the paint and pull it back up. And you've got this perfect simple leaf. Again on the side, pull, push down, pull back up. Go back in and fill it if you want to fill it in if you want to fill it in more with some paint. Basically, you want to mix up a lot of paint because this belly holds a lot of paint. Again, you're holding it, pushing it down, and pulling it up. It's like a pull. touch, attach, down and up. It's like down and up, <laughs> kind of like a little roller coaster ride. And you create these very simple, easy leaves that are really beautiful just with this brush. You don't need to draw out anything. You don't need to, you know, go through that whole process. This any beginner can do. You simply just maneuver the brush. Now while it's still damp, you can go back in and take some of the darker tones. I may put some red with that brown. And you can just tap in on the tips of the, see if it's still wet, you just tap in the tips and add in the darker tones. If they tried, you can release it and push the paint around. But while it's still wet, you can go in and just fill that in. So. I did it quick, pretty fairly quickly. If you didn't do it so quickly, if you just did one leaf, like I'll show you here, and it's still wet, then you can go in and add in the darker tones on each side. See, I'm just going right over that leaf, and then just go in and tap in on each end. It's really pretty just to add that darker tone to it. You got to get used to the brushes you know, and maneuver them. And move, your, move your paper around. Don't be afraid to move your paper. Um, you know, I think some people just think they have to paint straight forward and they don't have to do that. You can move your paper around. See, I'm going right back over it. And adding in the darker brown, just tapping in the top and the bottom. And you can leave some very light if you want to do that. But see how simple that leaf was to make? just with this beautiful uh, oval brush. 
we can make other types of leaves too. Then now with the with the rounder oval brush, you see the difference you'll get. You don't have that point like you do with um, the first one, but you still can hold it on its side and make the stem. So I'm going to grab some of this mustard color yellow and I'm going to turn the paper again and here we're going to go. Hold it on its side. You can still make a stem, see? And then you're going to hold it and just push down and up and you have rounded leaves. And pull it in. Just pushing and pulling in. Pushing and pulling in. Pushing and pulling in. Pushing down, lifting it up and pulling it in. Push down, pull it up, pull it in. Again here you can add in some darker tones just in the tips or on the bottom and it just gives it that nice extra element on the leaves. Again you're pushing down and pulling up and you make these beautiful rounded leaves. Very simple. And you've got two really pretty leaves. This small little filbert oval brush. You can make some really cute stuff. So I've got this burgundy kind of reddish brown color. Again, hold it on its side like a pencil. I use my pinky a lot to guide me. Now it could have been a little skinny than that, but I didn't do that. So then I'll put the little stems just like that. And then we're going to use that part. Push down and you get this little teeny, almost like if you wanted to make tiny little eucalyptus leaves, this fill brush would be perfect for that. It just basically makes them, right? But we're doing these little red burgundy color ones. I'm going to go back in and put a darker red in here. It just enhances the painting when you add some different tonalities to it. And you get this really pretty small little dainty element of leaves, right? Now you can use the oval brush again for more even bigger leaves. So put one over here. Let's see, we're building up our whole leaf repertoire here. Um, I would flip it around again. I'm going to grab this green color I have mixed here. So we're going to not do a stem. We're going to push down and curve it. Push down and curve it. And we get this really big one, right? And you can put another one, connect it. And another one. It's got a really big belly. So you're just curving those and then pulling it up and then connecting it that way. And now that's still damp, we can go in and add a nice dark green. to the tips. Here's another trick if it's not bleeding right. You just turn it around, turn it upside down and hold it this way upright and it should bleed. If not, you can spray bottle it or clean up your brush and manipulate it with your brush. Just touch around that paint and it should go down. But you see how this big belly creates these really big leaves? Really simply. So if you're painting a bigger painting. And the tip is fantastic because it's so skinny. You can just use it for a stem and get that really pretty big leaf. Right? We can practice again doing another yellow one. You can try and manipulate make a maple leaf pretty easily this way, like a faux one. So 
pushing down, curving it, right? Pushing down, curving it, meeting that one. Pushing down, curving it. And you got this semi quasi maple leaf. You can just go back over here and here. Don't need to draw it out. Look at that. And then with this tip, you can just little, hit the sides a little bit and you get those jagged edges. See that? I'm just touching on the side and pulling it out and doing the bottom here. And then you get simple maple leaf. Again, you can go back in and add mixing up uh, darker cones of the yellow. You can hit the, the tips of the leaf and have it bleed in. This paper is perfect for that. I always tell people Arches is the best for the bleeds for wet on wet. Um, you can get a cheap paper called B Paper on Jerry's Autorama or other stores that's it's only one size though I've seen. Um, it's a seven by, I think a seven by ten. See now I can manipulate the color, but basically putting the leaf down was the easiest part, right? And then you can go back in later with this tip when it dries and add in the, you know, the details, the veins. Again, we can maneuver and make another pretty uh, burgundy leaf over here with this brush. This brush is fantastic. I love it because of the point. Again, you can put a line here and you're just making that big old leaf. Just curving and curving, right? With this big old brush. And because it's got the pointy tip, you see, this is where the fun comes in. You go on the side, just pull it like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. And then you have the jagged edges. Well, very minimal work. Voila. And then again, you can go in and add a deeper red color. And the tips. You can uh, kind of flush some of it in too. Just in and around if you want to do that. And have it bleed. See I'm manipulating it. I put some dark tips in and I just kind of tap around it with some water. You can throw in some yellow. Get that very um, multicolored leaf look. Pretty simple, right? It should dry probably lighter like this one. And again, with this rounder oval brush, it's a lot of fun. Grab this green paint again. I'll make some more green up. You just mix all the colors that you like for autumn. I'm playing around with greens and reds and yellows, although I haven't done an orange yet. Make the screen. So here we go with that belly brush. See, make that big leaf with the belly brush. You can make that, um, I don't know what kind of leaf that is. Not a maple leaf, it's that funky rounded leaf that you see in autumn. Because it's rounded just by pushing that brush together. And you have that very simple leaf. And with that little guy, <laughs> you make the fun stems. I have this great Van Dyke Brown. 
so simple, right? We made all these pretty leaves with just these simple little brushes. Because people are like, what, what do you use with these brushes? Well, it's this. I use the Princeton eight long round a lot in my tutorials, but on my own, I use a lot of these other brushes and I love them. So then we get the stem again with this really small little fill bit oval brush. And then you can make these little leaves. See? Boop. Boop. Similar to this one, but really tiny because it's a small little brush. And it requires minimal effort. Just holding the brush, pushing down and pulling it up. And you've got this quaint little stem. Very easy, right? Super, super beginner, easy. And as I stated before, you can go back into your other ones when they dry. You can even use this brush and add in the pretty veins to all the leaves. You don't even have to add them, but it just gives it more interest. And that's pretty much fairly it, how to use these brushes to your advantage for autumn. We didn't have to draw them, right? We just used the brush to manipulate um, and create these really pretty. See, I'm gonna do an orange one. I haven't done an orange one yet. Really pretty leaves and stems. So I'm gonna use this little, little filbert. Try, you know, you should try brushes. I mean, I know, people, it's costly, but um, sometimes when you buy in bulk, um, they give you a discount. I buy five brushes Dick Dicklick, and it costs the same price as three. So yeah, I'm going to use this little brush again. I'm going to make some smaller little leaves. See, I'm just curving them now. Look how pretty that looks. So easy to do if you want to make a wreath, you know. And there you go. Like I said, you can go back in and you can add in the stems. I mean, that's the stem, the the veins on all your leaves. You could still use the brush you created them with, but it's fun to use them all mixed up in a little bit. I'll go back in and I'll add all the, the little veins to make it like the real autumn leaves. I'm not going to really add any veins to this one, probably not this one either, but you get the idea. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial on how to use um, oval brushes. They're so much fun. Um, I show a tutorial on how to make very simple um, Black Eyed Susans with this oval brush. And uh, I have a couple of tutorials using these other oval brushes. So you should go out and grab some if you can and play around with them and create this beautiful autumn leaves with your brushes. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Um, I also have really exclusive and fun tutorials over my Patreon. The uh, link is in the description box below. It comes with traceable downloads. Uh, it's a little more intense than the YouTube but it's a lot of fun. And um, I also have my uh, acrylic channel they call the Amazing Art Channel. Check that out. It's in the description box. Uh, I just do demos over there. just like fun to see how I paint with either fan brushes and palette knives and whatnot. So thanks guys for stopping by. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.